You know, one of my favorite things about the Too Tall Toby Practice Models app is the ability to get in here and take the same challenge and try it again. And this is really cool when you're trying to beat your previous time, like last time I did this in 13 minutes, 25 seconds. But it's especially cool when you've learned a new skill since you did the model last time. And that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I've actually learned two new skills to help me save some time when I'm creating this model. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to hit the like button on this video. And if you wanna follow along with as I'm doing this challenge, you can start out by going to twotalltoby.com and right in the middle of the page, you can get started with free practice models. This takes you to our practice models app where we've collected a repository of over 100 2D to 3D challenges where you are challenged to create a 3D model and calculate the correct mass using any 3D CAD system. We've got about 20 challenges in here that are free for anybody with a free Too Tall Toby user account. And then if you really enjoy the app, you can choose to upgrade to Practice Models Premium where you get access to the entire library. Well, one of these challenges that is free for all users is this one here. It's called 24-02-05 Buffer Stand. I'm gonna just slide over that name there and press Control C, save that name. I'm gonna use that in just a few moments. And we can see here that 303 people have completed this model. I am one of those 303 people. We can see that this is a tier five complexity challenge. So a little bit on the more complex side here. And we can see here that the average time for this model is 17 minutes and 36 seconds. The last time I did this model, I did it in 13 minutes and 25 seconds. Well, today, I'm gonna see if I can get that time down under 10 minutes using some of the new skills that I've acquired. And so let's take a look here. Let's click try again. And here we can click reveal drawing and go. What is the mass of this part? in x.xx pounds. So this one's in pounds and inches. We gotta remember to change our units for this one. Now, even though the clock is running, I think it's always a good idea to come up with a basic game plan before we get started. I have done this model before, so I kinda know what the game plan's gonna be, but basically what you wanna do is figure out where should the origin be located. We're gonna put the origin right here at the center of the part. And what should your first sketch look like? Well, my first sketch is gonna look something like this. It's gonna be an L shape that comes over, down, over. And my plan is gonna be to create half of the model and then mirror the whole thing. So I'm gonna take that L shape and I'm gonna extrude it out here to a depth of 2.625 mid plane or symmetric. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this shape here, this kind of arc shape looking down from the top. And I'm gonna cut that off the model. And this is gonna be the first place where I'm gonna save some time compared to my previous run because I don't have to create those extra lines for that sketch. Then I'm gonna move over here to the right plane and I'm gonna create this shape and I'm gonna extrude that as a surface. And this is just because I wanna test out a new skill that I learned recently, which is using the split command in on shape. So I'm gonna create that sketch as a surface, use the split command, and then that's gonna give me the, the foundation of half the model. Then all I need to do is make this cylindrical extrusion here, add the counter bore, and then add in this rib shape and this fillet down here in the corner. So it's always good to come up with a game plan, even though it might take a minute or so to come up with that game plan, you're gonna save that time on the tail end. If that sounds good to you, hit the like button on this video. I'm gonna move this over to my second screen. I'm gonna bring up the clock and my keyboard cam so you can see all the shortcut keys that I'm using. And we are gonna choose to create a new document here in Onshape. And now here I can use Control V to paste that document name. And that way I've got a new document created called 24-02-05 Buffer Stand. And this is in the public space if anybody out there wants to look up this file and kind of see how I worked through it. Now, when we click on this hamburger menu up top here, there's a menu item called workspace units. And this is where we can change from millimeters to inches. And this is where we can change from grams to pounds. So that's how you change your workspace units in on shape. Now I'm gonna go to the front plane and I'm gonna start with my game plan, which is to begin a new sketch on the front plane. So S key, new sketch. N key to get normal two, and I'm gonna create that L shape by beginning a line. So S key line, single click this point, move over, single click again, let go of my mouse, and 5.875 over two. So the max width divided by two. I'm gonna come up in this direction, single click in the background, and let go of my mouse, four, enter. Gonna move over this way. I'm not sure how long this line is supposed to be. Gonna move down this way. I'm gonna move over this way. And then I'm gonna close off this sketch. And when I do, I'm gonna let go of my mouse and I'm gonna type in 0 0.25. And then my final dimension is gonna be a dimension from this line to the uh, center of the model. So let me hit escape S key dimension. 
from this line to the center of the model. And that dimension is gonna be 5.25 slash two, enter. And so now we can move this over this way. We can move this over this way. This looks a little bit off. 5.875 over two, five point, oh, 4.25, 4.25 over two. There we go. So this is what your first sketch should look like if you're following along with as a tutorial. And I am trying to beat 10 minutes total. So I'm gonna keep moving through this pretty quickly. So S key extrude. And then in the extrude command, what I like to do here is as soon as I jump in the extrude command, you can press tab, 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 and you could advance down here to where the depth is. So that depth is gonna be 2.625, tab, tab, tab. And then you can choose symmetric for the uh, mid plane extrusion type. Then you can press the enter command on your keyboard, enter, and there you go, there is your first extrusion. So now we're gonna pick this face here, S key, begin a sketch, N key, get normal two. S key, we're gonna begin a three point arc command. And that three point arc is gonna go from this edge to this edge. Just be careful that you don't pick up on the midpoint. You just wanna pick up on the edge, not the midpoint. And we're not sure what this radius is, so we can just press escape here. And then you can pick this arc, pick this, edge and then you can press t for tangent pick this point pick this point you can press v to make them vertical and then s key dimension and you can create a dimension that goes from this point to the center of the model and that distance is going to be 5.25 over 2. i was misreading that dimension earlier now here's the cool thing once we get to this point we're done with that sketch so we're just gonna make these points vertical make this arc tangent make this dimension and then s key extrude and from the extrude, we can choose remove. And then from this box here, we can get rid of everything that's in there. So you can just press the space bar. Space bar removes all those current selections. And then you can choose this region and this region. So we don't even have to sketch those extra lines. You can just, just sketch the arc and then just use that single arc. And this is gonna go through all. So we hit the check mark and we're done with that feature. Now, the other way that we could do this by just creating the, the perimeter is we could do a surface cut. So we can pick this, this plane here, right plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal two, S key. We could create a, a line here that starts down in this corner, single click, move our mouse up this way, single click, move away. And then this is the line arc line transition. You just hold your mouse over this end point. So create a tangent arc there coming from that end point, come all the way up and around, single click, and then create another tangent arc arc to a line coming off of that end point. So you don't have to click anything special. You just go back to the end point and then move away again. And then you're in a tangent arc. But here I'm going to press escape because I only want those three entities. And I'll take this point here and I'll drag it down to this, this point down here. And I'll take this arc, single click the arc, single click this edge, T for tangent. I'll take this center point, single click, take the origin, single click V for vertical. And then I will use the dimension command to define an angle dimension here. And that angle dimension, which is shown on that side view is 14 degrees. And now that sketch is nice and black and fully constrained. And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the S key and jump into extrude. But instead of this being a solid extrude to either add or remove, I'm going to do a surface extrude. And the entities that I'm going to extrude are going to be these one, two, three entities here. And we're just going to take that so that it, it protrudes all the way through the end of the model. Now, this might not be the way I would do this for a speed modeling contest, but I just wanted to kind of try this out. If we go up here and we choose search in the search tools and we type in split, S-P-L-I-T, split, with the split command, what we could do is we can choose this part here to be split and we can choose this entity to split with, which is the surface. And that's gonna take this body and it's gonna split it into two separate bodies. But there's this check mark here that says keep both sides. And if I uncheck that, then I can choose to use that surface to kind of cut the solid body. So if you've ever been wondering how to cut a solid body using a surface, this is a good way to do it. Be sure to hit the like button. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever been wondering that. So we can hit the green check mark and there we go. We were able to use that surface to cut the solid. So now we're ready to create that little circular boss. Pick this face, S key, begin a sketch, S key, circle, 
take our cursor here right to the center of that arc, single click, move our mouse out here right to this, this point on the arc, single click, that creates that coincident relationship. So that circle is nice and fully constrained. And then S key extrude, and this is gonna be a solid. You gotta remember up here to go back to solid. So currently we're on surface. We're gonna go here to solid, and we're gonna say add, and then the faces and regions, it'll be the circular area here. And this extrusion is gonna go up to face and the face is gonna go up to is gonna be the right plane. But obviously we don't want that to go all the way up to the right plane, so we're gonna use the option here of offset distance. And that offset distance is gonna be set to 3.5 slash two, because we're only doing half the model. So there we go. That creates our little circular boss. And now we're ready to move on to that hole feature. So we click the hole command here. Make sure that you're working in inches for this hole. Make sure that you're working with the counter bore tool. And then for the hole location, you can use this tool here, select mate connectors. When you click on that tool, this is gonna let you pick on this circular edge here and it'll drop the, the hole right at the center of that, that edge using the mate connector technology in on shape. So the hole dimensions here, I'm gonna come down here. The through hole is going to be 0 0.5 tab 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 the counter bore is going to be 1.25 tab and then the counter bore depth is going to be 0 0.5 enter enter that creates a counter bore now we can press the s key and jump into the fillet command and i'm going to press tab 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 to get to the radius 0 0.5 for the radius of that fillet we'll pick this edge down here and we can hit the green check mark. And then for the final feature on this half of the model, we're gonna pick this face, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal too. And we're gonna use that same workflow that we use for that outer perimeter. Single click the line command or S key line, single click this lower edge, single click, come back, touch the end point, come up and around, single click, come down here, single click, close this thing off, can hit escape. This point and the origin are gonna be vertical. So V for vertical, S key dimension, the at the base of the rib, the distance is 0 0.5 at the rib base. The um, distance or the angle between these two angled lines here on the rib is going to be 16 degrees. And then the distance here from this lower, from the base of the part to this arc here up at the top is going to be 1.5 inches. And now we're ready to take that geometry S key extrude. And that's going to get extruded. And this is going to go up to part, up to part. And then you can just click on the part here and it kind of automatically makes the extrude go in the right direction so we can hit the green check mark and there we go everything's nice and merged so now we're ready to jump into the mirror command so mirror and this is going to be using a part mirror and the part mirror is going to be this entire part here mirrored about this face here and this will be an add and merge merge scope part one that looks good and then we can give this thing the final spin, make sure that it looks good. We can come down here to where it says part one. We can right mouse button and say assign material. And then we can say this is going to use the two tall Toby custom material. And that custom material is going to be plain carbon steel. We hit the check mark and then all the way down here, kind of behind the clock, you've got this option for mass properties. I'm going to click on that option for mass properties. Click this part. 4.929 so we'll type that in here 4.929 and enter and oh yeah we see that purple that purple uh square that purple square means you got it right let's move this back onto the main screen here so we can see it says congratulations this answer is correct but you already knew that as you have completed this practice model before so the answer that i put in there was 4.929 pounds and that was correct or at least correct within the tolerance the total time was 11 minutes and six seconds so not quite the 10 minutes that i was hoping for but i am happy to see that i was able to do it faster than last time 13 minutes and 25 seconds so maybe if i keep practicing i can get this thing to be a little bit faster still so let me know down in the comments if you learned anything about on shape during this tutorial if you learned anything cool that you can use in your daily workflow of course be sure to like this video be sure to subscribe and if you want to give these practice models challenges a shot you can visit us at tutaltobycom slash practice and i will look forward to seeing everybody's names on the community scoreboard and of course i will look forward to seeing everyone in the next tutaltoby tutorial